Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about our second week on the hard stand in Bundaberg and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. We got a lot done this week, unfortunately quite repetitive jobs, but things that needed doing nonetheless. First job we did was get some scaffolding, set it up, and then continue on with the needle gunning. So we now have all the paint off both the inside and the outside of the bulwarks. Originally, when I had the boat on the hard stand in Brooklyn, I only painted from the sponson down. This time we're doing everything from the sponson up. to fix the hole where I cut the paddle wheel log out uh, but Damien's got a really good tip for cleaning up the plasma cut hole before I do which is <laughs> when you've got like a round hole ish like this you've sort of freehanded it with the plasma you've got basically something that you need to like get a piece of steel up there and make it the patch to go over the more uniform you can make this edge the easier it is to do the patch so the trick that I use is just getting a, a six mil grinding disc just a, a new one so you got a nice flat edge on the side and then you grind by literally holding it as you're going around like 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 so you just grind it around and around and around like that um, and you end up flattening off all the burrs and all the rubbish that you get from the plasma cutter um, it doesn't take long to actually get it to work but you end up with a way way better job some people are really worried about doing it without a guard um, and the easiest way to deal with that is to give it to a friend and just get them to do it The steel I used to make this patch had been pre-sandblasted and primed to make doing the inside a bit easier. An arrow towards the keel. Alright, thanks. Here's the patch cut out. Now I'm going to grind the slag off the back and bevel it a little bit so we get better penetration on the double continuous weld both sides. the inside now and on Damien's advice I'm going to get in with a, a like an older grinding disc that's got more of a point to it and just feed it out a little bit before welding the outside. Next up I got back down into the cabin and started painting so I could finish that whole project of extending the beds, doing the shelves, the cupboard and start putting that room back together. While I was doing that Damien started fabricating some stainless pipes that we're going to put around the tops of the bulwarks to replace the rusted mild steel pipes. Right what we need to build on Renko is a rail and it goes on either side like so and then across the back like that. So um, we're basically going to, this is the front of the boat in that direction there. So we're going to essentially cut this mild steel pipe that's welded on top. I'm going to replace exactly the same with stainless. So we have a straight length of pipe here. There's a pre-made 90 degree curve in each corner. So a straight piece of pipe there. And then we have to make our own bend across the top at the back here like that. So it's 
pretty simple. Um, it shouldn't be a big job, so we'll crack on and get into it. The parts that we've got, we found at the scrapyard. So this is the same diameter as what's on there currently. So we're just gonna use that, but it's stainless versus mild steel. We've got a couple of lengths, 1.7 meters, and then we've got a few random sort of lengths here. We're gonna join these three together and that's gonna go across the transom. So that's that piece of pipe there, made out of the random lengths. And then those two lengths there are gonna be a uniform length that come down either side like this. These are the two different sizes that we have for the corners. So these ones here, will fit nicely on the end of the handrail like that. And we'll just tig those together and that'll form a beautiful join. And then these smaller ones here are gonna be a, a separate rail that we're actually gonna put on top. We're gonna lift the rail up and around the back of Renko. And these guys here are gonna be the corners for that. The handrail is gonna be made out of this thinner stuff here. So it's one inch ID, so it's 32 mil outside diameter. And we found this piece at the scrapyard the other day with these mandrel bent corners in it. So we're gonna use those as the drop where it comes down basically, um, you know, from the full height and meets the bullock on the side of the boat. Because we've got a bunch of random different lengths on these pipes and we don't necessarily know if they're cut straight, we're just gonna cut um, square ends on all of them and that way we can join them up really easily using a V block. Um, we'll just tig them together and then we'll make one length that's quite long, which will be perfect for that transom. To continue the theme of very long, boring, not very video friendly jobs, I've been uh, painting in the cabin now. It's getting there, but uh, not very exciting unfortunately. It's the trouble with doing boat restoration. Some of it's interesting, some of it really is not. <laughs> Handy little trick if you ever need to join two pieces of pipe together, bang on. Just get a piece of angle iron. You can sort of see we've got just a bit of angle right there. Clamp it down hard into the, um, like basically into the guts of that angle iron, and then you can TIG weld that up, and that's a perfect join. Okay, we just got to trim this mattress up to the uh, new section because it can't fit the complete rectangle because of the way the hull tucks in. Can give it a go with the reciprocating saw, see how that works. Next up Damien and I started cutting off those rusty sections of old steel pipe from the tops of the bulwarks, getting ready to install the new stainless ones he's been making. This railing had some bits and bobs attached to it that had rusted. Somebody just put bog in. Gonna take all the back out and put stainless on so that a tow line can run along here without doing any more damage in the future. I think there's a lot of rust inside the pipe. Me too. Definitely had water in it. Look at the water. Mm. Boiling.
done. Railing. Man. Next riveting cinema worthy job is to drill all the holes for the hatch. I've got the glass section undone with the hinges at the moment. They were roll pins, they were quite jammed. So I've got those out. I think I'm going to replace them with bolts and nuts with uh, plain shanks just to make them easier to remove in the future if I want to get the hatch off. Uh, anyway, lots of drilling, pilot hole, drill, paint, bolt, Loctite, the usual routine. I'll show you the end result though. Decided to go dome nuts on the inside, figure that would look the nicest. There was no way the screws were going to come out to remove the old glass, so I ended up having to drill the heads off all of them. All right. All right, we'll take this down the road to get copied in something uh, suitably tough for the job, and then we'll pop that in when it arrives. Too hard. one's going to come out. I'm going to get the ones I can out and then just over drill and tap the rest. At least it gives me a good sample of the thread so I get the right tap. A couple of these I've drilled but I need to clean the thread up. I don't have a UNC tap so I've just got one of these quarter inch UNC bolts. I've just put the tip on the grinding stone to sort of taper it slightly and then we'll just run a couple of cuts with an end grinder and try use that as a tap. Not particularly classy, but we'll see how it goes. It's getting there. Possibly over drilled slightly, but with a fair bit of retaining compound or whatever. I think we can get it to hold. The last piece of the puzzle to finishing the cabin was replacing the woodwork that I managed to burn down a couple of years ago welding. These are the bits of timber for the cabin now, cut, uh, routed and with a bit of stain sealer on them. So we got this bit and a little corner bit over here. So I'll install those and then we can finally put the mattress in and I'll show you what it all looks like. So this glass is a couple of mil thicker than the old glass. Oh you're cool. Um, so I've got a little bit less space to take up with. Yeah. What was the old one? Six? Six, this is eight. Oh, yeah. Is that laminate? Or what yeah, so it's two fours and a laminate. So yeah. it's eight point something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might put a bit of sicker on top anyway. Sicker's always worth it. Totally. Provided, you know, especially because the fact that it goes everywhere, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, why did you buy black glass? No, no, I just go stick it in. <laughs> oh, I love your tints, bro. Oh, it's just sticker, eh? <laughs> I also decided while I was here to finally cut out the remnant of the old wet exhaust. It's sort of been annoying me for a while and now seemed like a good time as any. Vicky's uh, making a new door frame for this, so Damien's gonna unscrew the old one so we can get the new one installed. I got the big flathead. Yeah, flathead screwdriver. Got a glue. Alright, 
this video wouldn't be complete without giving you a sticky beak at the finished product of the cabin downstairs, so I'll show you that now. The hatch down to the cabin is just at your feet when you're at the wheel. I always keep it closed at sea so A, no one falls down there and B, you do tend to sort of stand here. It's a very narrow wheelhouse, so you sort of look out, have one foot on it, one foot off. Being stainless, it is a little bit slippery when it's wet, so if it's wet outside and you walk in with wet feet. So I'm just going to quickly put some uh, non-slip tape on it and then we'll open it up and head down. Put pretty much the whole roll of tape on the hatch. That'll do for now. One day I may sandblast it and paint it with some sort of textured paint instead. But, cabin's below, a little ladder down. The shelves we did a week or so ago. Put new timber around here. Have the hatch in with new glass. And my lovely mood lighting on the Detroit. Got some wiring to fix up here still. But, Home sweet home. This is where we sleep on Renko. Well, thanks for watching. Next week we're going to get in and replace all that steel that got cut out of the back deck, as well as various other smaller rust repairs. So I'll catch you then. See ya.